So before I get started, I just want to preface this by saying that uh, this is not a bash on digital technologies, guys. Um, just because I love analog does not mean that I hate digital. There are many digital surfaces that I absolutely love. It's just that as far as I'm concerned, I just feel like analog devices and analog technologies are more reliable. And I will explain. So let's get going. So I've been thinking lately, I mean, what is it about analog things that really make me so excited versus digital? You know, I mean, I love digital technologies. Um, I love my tablets. I love the digital services. Uh, don't get me wrong. Um, but what is it about analog that really does it for me? I think a lot of it has to do with the design concept of some of these, most of these analog things that I have. It's, it's the fact that most of it was manufactured in a different era, you know, and they had a different mentality versus now. Um, a lot of the things that were built back in the day were built to last. They were built to be durable. That was, that was like the, um, the main characteristics of, of a lot of these things. You can, you can talk about vehicles, for example. The cars were solid. They were heavy. They were massive. They're not always the most efficient in terms of power consumption and all of that, but they're built solid and they're built to last a very long time. And that's why we still have them. I mean, talk about film cameras. I have film cameras that are 100 years old. I have um, equipment here that are over at least 50 years old. Just compare that with an iPad that you bought a couple years ago or a phone that you bought last year. The technologies these days are built to, um, to be disposable and to be renewed or refreshed almost every year. There's this thing called planned obsolescence and that is built into a lot of the technologies of this modern era. Um, they don't plan for your iPad to last for more than five years. Even if that hardware is strong enough to last for that long, they will find a way of compromising the software so that you're not able to have full function or full benefits out of that device that you bought with your own money. And that's something that really is a pet peeve of mine. It's at my core. It just speaks to the lack of fairness. And if you're going to spend a thousand dollars or fifteen hundred dollars to buy a, a tablet, why don't you get to use that for as long as you want? There's this particular example that I'm going to give you guys. Um, I think it was 2009 or something like that when the first iPad came out. I was so excited about it. I was so excited that I went out and bought an iPad for my son. <laughs> my son was, uh, he was a newborn at that time and I didn't even tell my wife. I went out and just bought the iPad and she was quite upset about that actually. I really regretted that. I learned my lesson from that. Um, but this iPad was a great source of entertainment for my son who was in his developmental phase, right? He was a baby, but we could do so much with it. I mean, that touch ability to touch um, what he is interacting with and be able to interact with the screen like that was incredible. That's something we as a uh, me as a as a as a kid, I never got to experience any of that. And, and that was leaps and bounds beyond my wildest imagination. And that's why I just had to buy it for my son. For my son. <laughs> I ended up getting a lot of enjoyment out of that tablet as well. Um, but the point I'm trying to make is that this tablet served us really well, okay, for a few years. Then I, Apple decided that, hey, wait a second, we want to sell you more tablets. 
So this tablet that we made was a bit too strong. I mean, that tablet was solid. It was built like a tank and it's, it ha doesn't even have a crack on it. It's been dropped several times. And unlike the newer models, it doesn't, the screen doesn't shatter. So here's my trusty old iPad, first generation iPad. It's taking a few beating, like a few nicks right there. Look at that. This is almost as old as my 13 year old son. But the good thing is this thing was built like a tank. And this thing here, it's in great working order. The hardware is in great condition, but Apple decided to gimp the software on the excuse that, oh, the specs are not up to par with our latest. But the point is, they didn't have to do that. They didn't have to do that. It's a perfectly good hardware. Okay, so why don't I just try to download Netflix on this perfectly working first generation iPad? Okay, let's install this, try to install this, and see, this app is not compatible with this iPad. Now, Netflix used to work just fine on this, but look at that, I can't even get Netflix on this anymore. It's basically now all the old games that I have on that tablet, I cannot delete them because if I delete them, I can't reinstall them. And that's, that's, that's a shame. I bought this iPad at great cost and and the point is that I can't even use it to its full benefit right now. And don't even get me started on what Microsoft did to the infamous Zoom. I actually have two Zoom players here. This is the Zoom HD and this one here is the I guess the Zune 120 model with the hard drive in there. Now the Zune was my favorite, absolute favorite um, audio device until Microsoft decided to just mess up the whole launch and the whole rollout of this device and uh, eventually decided to nix the service. So now, the Zune is great. I mean, these devices work perfectly still for listening to music, which I really care about, but you cannot connect to the services uh, to download new music, new podcasts, uh, uh, even the apps. You have to do a little, um, you have to do a little maneuvering with the, with the registry and um, this Thankfully, there is a bunch of folks out there who still care about these devices that are working um, basically to go around the blockades that Microsoft has put in place just so that we were able to still have a, a decently functioning device here. A lot of these things that uh, um, were made back in the day, these analog devices were made in a way that you were able to repair them. Um, they were made with parts that could be swapped out. Um, they were made with uh, the design concept that, that gave you, the person that owns the device, the ability to repair them. Um, for example, recently I bought three um, reel-to-reel recorders and all three of them had issues, but with my limited knowledge of, of um, electronics or, or even of the mechanics of these devices, I was just able to just understand what was wrong with these equipment and I was able to fix them myself, you know, and now they're working very well. Um, the point I'm trying to make here is that these devices were made, you could actually even open them for crying out loud. Let, let's just take that as a start. The devices that are made these days, be it from vehicles, from tablets to computers, they're made with the design concept to keep you out and to make it as difficult as possible for you to repair, to replace, to swap things out. The other reason why I love analog technologies is the fact that there, a lot of it is very tactile. Um, 
for example, a cassette. You want to play music, you have to get the cassette, um, possibly rewind it or forward it. You have to put it in to the player, close it, press play, enjoy. That whole process of you getting it set up and enjoying it, that whole process is a little bit more involving. And to me, it's very, very enjoyable. The fact that you actually get to own a physical copy of the thing that you bought. <laughs> um, for example, um, my cassette players, my vinyl. You can see my vinyl collection right up there. I have my cassette collection as well. I have my 8-track collection as well. Uh, actually, my 8-tracks are right there. And the advantage is that you actually own a physical copy of the music or of the medium or whatever thing that you bought. You own that physical copy of it. You're not dependent on some service on a server somewhere that is at risk of being shut down or being down or something before you get to enjoy that the full experience of that thing that you bought. If the internet went off, I don't care because I, my, I can still play my vinyl without any restrictions. My vinyl uh, players here, um, they're not connected to the internet. They don't care. You know, my cassette player doesn't care if the internet is down or some server is down. I still, I still enjoy my music. I get to keep my music without the risk of losing them. Even on Netflix, for example, um, if you're relying on Netflix for all your movies, you know that these movies are licensed by Netflix for a limited period. Sometimes they're licensed for certain countries and not for other countries. So if you're in Canada, you can't watch a movie from the United States. And all of that, I don't have to deal with that. With my VHS collection, with my DVD collection, um, I get to watch the movies whenever I want to. When I buy the physical copy, I get to enjoy them whenever I want to. And I have movies here that are not on Netflix. I don't think they will ever be on Netflix. I have very eccentric movies that I really enjoy that I keep going back to. And need I mention that going through that whole experience of, uh, of uh, actually watching a physical copy of a movie also adds to that richer experience. And th these are things that I'm teaching my kids about. I'm teaching my kids on how to enjoy VHS movies and they are really enjoying it. We have family movie time. Um, it's just great, guys. It's just great. If you're not doing that, I suggest you try it. Um, if Try it, guys. Get, 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 start building yourself an analog uh, media collection, and you'd be surprised how much fun it really is. There are a few other advantages that I could talk about, like archiving, for example, for film cameras, for example. And I've shared with you guys why I love film cameras and film photography. The fact that I have the physical copy of my pictures and in the form of the negatives or um, even I can print them if I wanted to. If my computer decides to conk out tomorrow, um, I have memories of my kids' childhood on film, you know, and that to me is very, very comforting. So it's that whole, it's that whole having a fiscal thing really, really is a great advantage. So I'm pretty sure there are more reasons that I could, I could think about, um, but let me know, let me know what your, um, what your reasons are for why you enjoy analog technologies because I think if you're watching this video you probably are into analog technologies like I am. So let me know in the in the comments section what you guys think. Thanks so much guys for joining me on this episode of The Analog Life. I hope you have a wonderful day. Take care.